Hi everybody. This is Jackie Schaumburg. Um, I'm doing an exercise today that I did following Judy Woods, uh, who is an artist in New Zealand who makes wonderful abstract art. And she had a free workshop of sorts and I decided I would take it and it was a lot of fun. So I'm trying something very different than what I normally do. The first thing we're doing in this video is preparing the background. So this whole video is just about creating some texture um, and some interest in the background. The next video, part two, will show you what the, the final paintings look like at the end. Okay, so I'm cutting up some papers that I'm gonna be painting over and I'm really doing this to create some subtle interest so that when you stand back from the painting, you won't necessarily see this texture, but when you're up close, because this is gonna be a largely kind of black and white painting at the end, um, this will still show some, you know, when you get up close, I forget what they're called, but basically just subtle details that you'll only notice if you're looking closely at the painting. So it's a way to keep things not too simple and that the viewer can see more things and notice more things the more they look at your art. So I'm cutting out some, you know, different types of shapes, different sizes, different types of paper. And I have four canvases I'll be working on through this. So you can see I'm using different scratch paper that, you know, this orange I'm looking at is when I was cleaning off my brayer, I always liked the texture of that. Cutting some shapes out. Just trying to keep things unique. Very proud of myself. It's very different than my normal shapes. It's not just a big orb. Nothing against orbs. Those are my favorite. But it's fun to try new shapes too. Clearly I didn't have my camera in the greatest spot here as I'm just off the edge. I'd correct it, but I cannot go back in time. Still haven't figured that one out yet. There's a teeny orb. So this is a fun exercise because again, you don't need to think too much doing it. Um, I did try to put some thought into where I was putting things and again using shapes that weren't all the same shape. So each collage piece is a different type of shape. And there are several different types of paper that I'm using which will all show up differently in a subtle way. There we go. Back in the frame. And since you know that this is going to be painted over, or at least in this case, I knew this was going to be painted over, I didn't have to stress too much about color at all. I could just focus on shape. So I have, I have some edges that are torn, like this paper I'm putting on right now. Oh, no, no, those are little teeny little, I changed my mind. <laughs> those are teeny little things I cut out of, the, of a different piece. But I have some edges that are torn like this one and some that are cut. So some will give very straight or precise edges, hard edges, and some will have more soft torn edges. Any difference you can put in will just make it more interesting for someone to look at later. All right, now this is after I've done the collage, now I'm painting the entire thing black. I told you it was different than my normal work, but very, very fun. 
So I cover these all black. And you can even see with the light, as this paint is still wet and drying, you can see the different collage shapes underneath there. And you can see that it's subtle, but they're also very visible when you get up close. This is me painting the edges. All right, first one, pretty much done. I'm doing all four of these because of two things. One, I, <laughs> hi, I wanted to make, I wanted to be able to change certain pieces and see how it would go. So I wanted to be able to experiment and experiment with four different things at once, potentially, rather than just doing one. I always try to work in a series whenever possible. It also, reason number two, keeps things cohesive. When I'm doing things at the same time, my brain makes similar choices across different pieces of canvas, and it just helps things stay together and look more like a cohesive series. I'm using a screwdriver to scratch through the black paint just to make some lines and marks. This is while the black paint is still wet. I did not do it in the first one, you'll remember. So that was one experiment. All right, so this is another experiment. This is one that I had already started with a bunch of collage. So I'm not adding any other special collage to it. I already had a ton of collage on the piece and I had abandoned it at some point along the way. But I'm still painting it black. So it has a lot of interest, but it's different interest. And as you can see, I'm carving through with the, with the uh, screwdriver and I'm getting a lot of color through that because of the color underneath. So I'm using different tools just to make marks through there. Like those little circles. So again, experiment number three now. So we've got one with no marks, one with marks, and a third that has marks and a little teeny guy holding flowers. But with some colors coming through. You can see I'm drastically changing what I'm doing as I go. Started off with just thin lines. Then I used paper towels to make it less opaque. And then I just used a baby wipe to clear off a big section of black paint to let those colors show through. Now, Judy Woods in her initial kind of assignment did not suggest doing all these different things. This is me trying to try more things. So her initial assignment was just to paint black over the top after we do the collage, and then you can scratch through while the paint is still wet. I'm adding more things to the assignment, to the experiment. Now that everything is black and this has dried, I am going to be dividing this canvas into two different parts, a top and a bottom. And when I do this, I'm putting some gloss medium on the tape just so the tape gives me a clean line when I peel it off. I'm gonna be adding white
and I'm trying not to cut it in half exactly in the middle. I just think it looks nicer when there's one side is smaller than the other and one side's larger. If it's half and half, you know, artists say it looks like a belt. But if you really want something that's half and half, go for it. Again, you're the artist, you get to make the decisions. Something that was nice about uh, making this, especially just starting off making the background, was that you really just got to play. You can tell I really like, I really like the playing parts of things. I don't want to think too much. I want to try and feel more, go with my intuition more than thinking and planning things out. I don't know if I've said this before. Um, well, I know I said that I've, I've taken improv before, like improv comedy. And it's not about being funny. It's about thinking in the moment and reacting to what's present. And I love improv. I would gladly do improv on a stage every day of my life. Most fun I've ever had. But if you want me to be in a play and do a monologue, I just, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I could be on stage. I'm not, I'm, that's not a problem. But the thought of needing to prepare and needing to know lines for something and have it be the same thing over and over and over and over and over again is beyond, <laughs> it's just beyond me. I just don't have any interest in it. I took an acting class once. I had to do a monologue. It was the same monologue every day of the class. And it was a you know six or eight week class. And I did not enjoy it at all. I think I might have even stopped going. I don't remember if I finished the class or not. But uh, improv is so much fun because there's so much experimentation and intuition and just genuinely funny moments that come up. And that's the part of painting I love. I love the improvisation. I love reacting to what's there. I love that you never really know what's going to happen until you're done, at least for me, since I don't plan things most of the time. Almost all the time I don't plan what it's going to look like at the end. I might plan the method of applying paint, but usually that changes halfway through anyway. Um, yeah, so as long as it's exciting for me, um, I would do it every day for the rest of my life. If you want me to paint the same thing a hundred times, I'm, I can't. I just don't even think that my, that my body would do it. I think I would just like revolt. I'm using a small pipette to just add drops of water rather than using my spray bottle. And the pipette does a couple things. One, you can very carefully place where you want your dots and you can see how big and round these dots are versus the spray where there's a lot of little tiny dots like on the right side. I'm adding some white that goes across that divide just so it's not only a harsh line dividing the two sections. So there's some overlap. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all paint this fast? <laughs> I think this is six times regular speed. Whenever I see it, I'm like, man, I know exactly what I'm doing in this video. I'm going so fast.
like the little explosion of white going into the black area. All right, so now this crazy color one. Remember when I said you don't have to avoid the belt? Well, here you go. Pretty much half and half. So this is another experiment. I decided I would play with the opacity of the white. I think because this one has all the color behind it, I wanted to see what it would look like to have the color show through on the white section as well. don't remember what I was feeling at the time I did this, but right now watching it, I'm like, no, no, leave it white. Put it back on. It looks very busy to me, very busy in the black section and very busy in the white section. But that's what the experiment is for. You only know what you like and what you don't like if you keep trying new things. It's the only way to figure out what else you like that you didn't know about yet. If someone knows a better way to do it that doesn't involve that, please let me know. But as far as I've ever heard, that's the way to find out. So this one I really like. I like those dots. It feels like there are good quiet areas. There are good areas of interest. Really happy with this one right now. So of all the backgrounds, this is definitely my favorite one. And I'll show you all four as they are now. So this is just the backgrounds. This is where I'm stopping with the backgrounds. My next video will show you what they look like after more paints applied. Take care.